Good morning, precious. Mm, 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 mm. How you doing, baby? Happy. <laughs> What's the day? <laughs> Happy Tuesday. And today on Coffee and Conversation with your girl, Shud Kenya. When you get a minute, go to that YouTube channel, Shud Kenya, and hit subscribe. Look at some of the videos. And if you see something that you like, I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> Just hit share, guys. Yeah, do that for your girl. Damn, I'm out here working hard for y'all. I'm all in Jamaica. Just bring y'all some lovely views, a good guest, everything. Can you see? Is that, is that, is that, is that that what? That ain't gonna work. <laughs> Very inappropriate for a family show. Okay, uh, let me chill out. Okay, guys, so. We've been talking about a lot of stuff these last couple of weeks, trying to get you ready for your test. Um, before I left the States, we were talking about the psychological profile and damage of your baby that was removed from your life. Just taking out your life. You can't go back over your mama's house. You can't go back over your daddy house. Don't call them. You can't see them no more. It's a wrap on it. Period. No CPS, no charges, no court, none of that. Just you can't see your mama. Because I don't like her, I'm mad at her, she left me, and you can't see your daddy because he cheated with my girl, and they together, and they just got married, and I'm mad, I'm still mad and bitter about this. So, no, you can't see them because of that. So, we talked about the psychological profile and damage of your child because that is abuse, yep. There's no physical abuse or neglect, and you just take a child out of a parent's life. That's abuse because y'all supposed to share that baby. That's both of y'all baby. Yeah, that ain't just yours to wear around your neck like a token. That's both of y'all baby and that's both of y'all baby to raise in y'all likeness. Period. So we talked about the psychological damage and profile of the children left behind. And then the brothers and the sisters that don't see their sister or their brother no more. We talked about them. We talked about the psychological damage and profile of the parents of your baby mama and baby daddy. We covered all that this past two weeks. So today... Remember, we, you know, we said we was going to talk about your psychological profile and the damage that you might have went through as a result of the baby being taken out your life. I know. I know you on the sidelines. Everybody telling you the baby will be back and just wait and, you know, it's going to be okay. And I know that's, how, yeah, it's, it sounds good. <laughs> and it's even the truth. I'll be honest with you. It's, it's even the truth. Even in my situation, I know my baby going to come back. When? I don't know. Why? Because she has some of me and some of him. So even though she's with him and she has a lot of his ways and going by his teachings and only his teachings, you got to keep in mind I was in her life for 15 and a half years. So I, I'm there too in her head space. Yep. So it's certain parts of me that I've put in her that can be used against me. Like, I'm, I'm stubborn at times. Yep. When I'm set on something, then that, that's it. Either I'm going to make it happen or what. But, yeah, I'm set. I'm set in stone. And my children are pretty much like that because I raised them to be that. Yep. So, hey, if this is what she made up in her mind to do, it's a good chance she going to stand on that shit. Because I've taught my children to do just that. I just never thought that the powers and everything that I put in her would be used as against me. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what happens. Whatever you put in them, yeah, it can definitely be turned against you and used against you. So. So, with that being said, remember I told you about your psychological damage and profile. It's going to be hard to pinpoint. Why? Because you still growing without your baby. So, you changing every day. You going through emotions that you shouldn't be going through. You dealing with things that you shouldn't have to deal with. Because if that baby was there, you wouldn't be. Yep. Hey, Eric. Good morning, honey. Hey, Lens. Good morning, guys. So, let me see what I wrote down. I wrote down it was still tricky because you're still growing. And you're growing abnormally with the baby being gone. Now, if you lost your child through death, you're still going to be affected psychologically. You already know that. Yeah, you probably, it's going to be a long time before you heal. So if you lost your baby through death, I strongly encourage you to seek grief counseling. I strongly encourage you to seek grief counseling, not only for yourself, but if you have children that has experienced the same loss, losing that child, their brother or their sister, 
y'all all need to go to some type of family counseling, some type of therapy, okay? I will suggest that anybody that has lost their child through death, okay? And shit, if you lost your child because your baby mama or baby daddy took them out your life, you might need to seek some type of counseling too. Um, it might not be grief, but it's borderline because you're still suffering a loss. So, yeah, if you, you deal with that however way you, you can, but you lose a child through death, you are pretty certain that your baby not coming back. Okay, so I know that that's hard to take in, it's hard to digest, it's hard to think about, but you know that that chapter is over and that is final and that baby not coming back. So you know at this point you have to move forward, however way and whatever, and you can set the tone for that. And getting treatment is going to be the first step, okay? Getting some type of help is going to be the first step. So after you do that, then you'll find ways of coping and find ways to move on. And then your growth and development will get right back on track of where it should be as a result of the baby not coming back, okay? But if you're a parent and your child was just taking out your life, that baby is a chance that baby coming back. So you always in limbo. Until that baby is there and that's your final chapter and it's closed, you're going to always be in limbo. So let's just touch on, because this is too deep to get into free for 15 minutes on coffee conversation. I'm going to touch on what I can for free. Okay. So let me ask you a couple questions. Um, Do you feel abandoned by your baby not being there and not being in your life? And yeah, do you feel abandoned? Do you feel left out? Because you're not included. Nothing that's going on with that baby. Some of y'all ain't even talking to your baby mama or baby daddy or the baby. So y'all don't know what's going on with your child. Ain't that crazy? You should feel some kind of way just from not knowing what's going on. Yep. Um, do you feel like you wasn't good enough? Yeah. You feel like you're not good enough? You're not good enough to be in that baby's life? That's why they took you out? You feel like that? Do you feel helpless? Because it ain't really nothing you can do. Yeah. It ain't nothing you can do. You can talk to that baby till you blue in the face. But if them people don't planted seeds and poison that baby against you, you got to think about what that means. When you plant seeds, when you grow in a garden or something like that, you put the seeds and you bury them and you water them. And what happens? It grows from the root and it grows up and it grows out. If they don't plant the seeds in your baby, it's not that easy to just unplug them. So if people come to you telling you your baby grown now, your baby can make that final decision, that's not how that works. It's not that easy. When your child has been manipulated mentally, yeah, it's not that easy because seeds are planted and you got to dig them out. Yeah, you probably can't get to all of them because you don't know how many of them been planted because you wasn't around when that baby was over there. And if they poisoning that baby, a lot of stuff can die from poison, right? So a lot of the teachings, your memories, you... Yeah. Do you feel useless? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the role of the parent, certain things that you're supposed to be doing and whatnot, and if you're not able to do it, and knowing that you're supposed to because of who you are, and that's a, I know you feel a little, little useless. Do you feel unloved? When last time you heard your baby tell you they love you? When last time you've been able to hug your baby, kiss on your baby? I miss hugging my baby. I miss because I'm very affectionate. I'm in love with my children. Yep. Do you know I stopped smoking weed and drinking when I found out I was pregnant? How many of y'all can say that shit? <laughs> Step up, mamas. I'm not here to judge you, but I know women that have smoked and drank throughout their whole pregnancy, okay? I know them personally. I seen it. So I'm just trying to tell you. I love them babies so much, too. I stopped doing everything for them 40 weeks, nine months. Yeah. So I'm very affectionate with my babies. I love on them. I kiss them. I hug them every chance I get. Yeah. So I miss hugging her and kissing on her. Yeah. Do you feel... Are you emotional? Are you more emotional now? Yeah. You find yourself crying every now and then? I know. Yeah. Normally you wouldn't. I know. Do you feel like you're not respected? As the mama or the daddy or who you are. I, I know. Ain't that crazy? This is a lot. Are you hurt? Are you hurting? Does it hurt you? Does it pain you? Or are you like, well, yeah, I just have another kid. <laughs> yeah. Forget it. You know, when that baby ready to come around, they'll come around. But until then, I'm about to live my life. Like, how you feeling? As you, as you hurting? Oh, you're like, hey. You got other kids, you so feel what? <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like you wasn't doing what you supposed to do? You wasn't doing your part. That make you feel like that. Hey, Reese. 
You feel like that? I know. I know. And ain't no way you should be. See, that's, this is all those things I just named is part of you growing and developing abnormally. Because you shouldn't be feeling none of this stuff. Yeah. And if you feel it one or two maybe for a short period of time, but when your baby is taking out your life, you feel this ongoing pain forever until you reunited to the, with that baby. Yeah. And they come at all different times. You might have days where all this hits you at once. That's why you got to go seek mental health treatment if that baby was taking out your life because you got to be able to help deal with it. Wow. You have to you have to find ways of dealing with all of this stuff until that baby come back into your life. So when you go talk to a therapist, they break down all of this stuff here. If you having these feelings and these thoughts and whatnot, they help you break it down and they help you try to get get through it and deal with it and cope with it. Because like I said, you're gonna have days where all this hit you. I have my days all this hit me at one time. One time. So it's days if I don't come on here, it's because I'm probably at home crying. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get myself together because I can't be nothing for y'all if I ain't right. So that means I got to get myself together. I got to go talk to somebody. I got to chill out. I might have to just stay home and just rest my mind. Whatever it takes to help me get there. But yeah, I've been here with all this at one time. Mm -hmm. You ask yourself, how could that happen? As much stuff as y'all see me do, as much like I sit back and think about everything that I know and all the stuff that I do. And it's like, People actually thought I couldn't teach her nothing. Like, I wasn't doing nothing by her. I wasn't doing... Yeah, because I... And it, and it hits me hard because of the type of work that I do. Because I deal with families. I work with CPS. I work with the Department of Human Services. So, I deal with children. I deal with families. So, to know that there are children out there who loves their parents unconditionally. I know children that love their mama and their mama abandoned them. I know children that love their mama and their mama allowed their boyfriends to sleep with them. I know children that love their mama, and their mama ain't never did shit for them. I know children that love, I know children, that, and when I tell you, when I think of that, even though I love the fact that they love their parents, because that made other people around them was teaching them the right thing and teaching them that they love their mama and their daddy no matter what. You only get one. To know that people are around them, teaching them that, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good because that's how it's supposed to be. There's no rule book in teaching and, and parenting. There's there's no right way to parent. There's no one way to parent, you know, because all children are different. But it's certain basics that's universal. And respecting your mama and your daddy is one. And that's something that should be preached in every household. That should, that should be preached everywhere your child goes. That should be preached by everybody that's in your, your child's life. So, yeah, when that lesson is missed. You guys to imagine how much other stuff is missed. So when I sit back and think about how many children love their parents no matter what, and then I think about all the stuff that I did, how many games I sat in on. When I gave my last so she can go get something off that damn food truck. When I when I scrapped up and, and hustled up and got out here and did something strange for some change to make sure that I got gas money. Because it was $400 in gas, baby. I had a foreign vehicle for a couple of years, so you got to think about it. I'm going to Cass Tech. I'm going to another high school for the other baby in Oak, uh, Ferndale. I'm, I'm going to basketball games. I'm going to volleyball games, sometimes two in one day. I'm taking other kids home because they mammy ain't came and got them. I'm attending every war ceremony. I'm attending everything. I'm support. I'm doing everything that a mama's supposed to do so to know that I'm not loved by mine. That shit is devastating. I ain't going to hold you up. It's devastating to me on some mornings. So I have people in my life that push me to keep going. I literally, God has literally put people in my life that every day, they pushing me to keep going. They pushing me to not stop. They pushing me. They telling me everything is going to be okay. They being there for me, my emotional support. So I have that, thank God. But there's parents out here that don't. And I feel for them. So that's why I say you got to go get treatment. You got to go get therapy. Yeah, because you need that to get through. That baby takes up such a void in your life that when that baby is gone, you need a lot to. You see my house? My house was looking like a trap house because I wasn't trying to stay there. But when everything fell apart and I had to decide that I got to stay there for a minute because of this. Shit. Yeah, my backlash from that baby being removed from my household, baby, is everything. I'm not even going to bore you. I'm sorry, baby. I'm not even going to bore you with all the stuff I had to do, change, reroute, fix. It's like building a plane in the air. But when I tell you, that house, somebody rolled past the other day and said that my house looked like I'm the president of the block club. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. They said my house looked like I'm the president of the block club. And that's because I had to find a way to fill the void. 
So I don't know how you do it. I don't know what you have to do, but me using my hands and working hard is working all day. So I don't think about it as much helps me. So yeah, I practically rebuilt my whole day. <laughs> Cause that baby meant so much to me. That baby, that baby meant so much. To me. So y'all, that's it for coffee a conversation with your girl Shakia. I'm still in Jamaica. I'm about to go home in a minute. Damn. I'm about to leave all this beautifulness. Yeah, but it's been fun. Jamaica don't owe me nothing, baby. Shout out to Roberta Jarrett. She is the reason why I'm here and the reason why I had such a wonderful time from v Town. So I hope y'all look her up. And if you ever want to travel to Jamaica, she is the perfect tour guide for you. She lives here, so she has access to everything. Stuff that other people don't know about. They took me to an island that don't nobody even go to. Because I'm just that, that girl. So Motor City Radio is here in Jamaica, baby. I'm here in Jamaica with coffee and conversation guys and i hope you enjoy your day i'll see y'all soon Mwah.